some introductions real quick, and then uh, uh, I'll hand it over to Steve Bobo. I'm Jeffrey Thomas, and I'm, for better or for worse, kind of organizing the Entrepreneurship at Williams uh, program this year. I'm also teaching the Entrepreneurship Winter Study in January. Um, this is uh, Bob Krauss, and some of you may know Bob, he's an alum, uh, and he um, does a lot of things. Uh, but he's also helping with this workshop series. Um, and he's going to be giving a workshop uh, later in the in probably next semester on, on negotiating skills, how to negotiate um, for uh, a deal with uh, investors. Um, but I want to talk for a minute about S uh, Steve here and, and just tell you that uh, uh, Steve has been involved uh, with some early stage companies. Uh, in, including one that, that was venture funded. Uh, and for the past 20 plus years, um, he's really specialized in business planning and he's seen over a thousand business plans at, at least in that time. Uh, he's the uh, director of Berkshire Enterprises and uh, they're based in Pittsfield and he works with um, all kinds of entrepreneurs uh, in Berkshire County, we're interested particularly in setting up I think, small businesses, um, but we'll learn more. Is that fair? Sure, and you can ask me questions at any point. Yeah. Um, I'll just say just a couple other things. Um, Steve is a, a Williamstown resident for many years, and he's also a Williams parent. Um, you may know his son, Nick. Um, and then finally, uh, he's going to be teaching a winter study, uh, also titled How to Write a Business um, which uh, <coughs> is good, which he's done in the past, and I've heard is really good. So I'll hand it over to Steve. Okay, thanks. I mean, basically, a business plan is a story. You take an idea and you write a story about how you're going to start the business. Um, but the question is, why would anybody write a business plan when you've got the idea? Um, basically, you know, you come up with your brilliant idea and everybody's going to want to buy your product or service because it's yours and you thought of it and it's really good, right? <laughs> um, and you talk to a few friends and family members and they get really excited. They tell you how fabulous it is, right? And then they reach in their pockets and they give you a, a ton of money that you need to start. If that doesn't work, you go to a banker and you tell him about your fabulous idea. And they either on the spot give you a loan for more money than, than you need at favorable rates, or they call their cousin, who's a venture capitalist who may work with Bob, and they give you millions for a very small percentage of your company. That's how it works. So why write the business plan? What's the business plan? Um, you know, what's wrong with fiction? Yeah? That's not how it works. Why not? <laughs> They're going to need to see more than that. Why? Because there's a lot of people with a lot of ideas. Okay. What else? Yeah? Yeah, why do you need a plan? I mean, you've got this idea. What's the plan? Do? Again, let's let's look at it. You have this brilliant idea for your business. How do you know it's brilliant? Other than you thought it of it and you're here, you're at Williams, you're with a bunch of brilliant people, yeah. Because it's disruptive and it disrupts an industry in a way that no one's ever done. Well, you think it does. You think it does. Uh, maybe to uh, get some second opinions on it, you write a business plan just to. Well, you, you know, start with a, you got to start with an idea. Yeah. Um, you think it's, it's going to disrupt everything, it's going to be fantastic, but you got to verify that. Right? You got to see it. In the first place, everybody doesn't buy anything. 
and figure out who's going to buy it, what they'll pay for it. I mean, you talk to your family and friends, and they're all going to tell you what a great idea it is. Because that's, that's what they do. They're there to support you, right? So I had clients who talked to their family and friends about what they were going to buy tons of stuff from them. And when they opened their doors, their family and friends bought nothing. Because <laughs> you ask your family and friends, and what are they going to tell you? Whatever they think you want to know. Um, so they don't give you all the money that you need. And I've got a, two sons who have business ideas at this very moment. And I've yet to write a check to them. <laughs> um, they think they have a brilliant idea. I'm not so sure. I want to see the research. I mean, you go to the banker. What does the banker want to know? Other than you've got a fabulous idea. What do they need to know? How are you going to pay it back? How are you going to pay it back? They need to know how you're going to make the money, how it works, and then how you're going to pay it back. And they also need to know what else? What you're going to use as collateral. And that isn't included in your brilliant idea. That's part of your plan. If you're going for bank funding, if you're going to a venture capitalist, what are they going to want to know? They get brilliant ideas all the time. They get stacks of brilliant <coughs> ideas, right? And not so brilliant ideas. But everybody who gives you an idea thinks it's brilliant, right? Um, so what is the plan for? Hopefully the plan is so that the, the family, you, your banker if you need one, your venture capitalist, your partners will understand what you're trying to do. Uh, okay, but it starts with an idea, brilliant or mundane. It may change the way everything happens or it may be simpler than that. I, mean, I worked for a company before there was an internet. There were commercial databases. We set up a program on little computers to search commercial databases to figure out which database might have information to search them. And we spent a year and a half, I spent a year and a half writing business plans. Well, writing a business plan, then rewriting it after we went to see venture capitalists writing an effort to sell more until we raised a couple million dollars. Um, but there was no internet. Be, we thought that, that uh, libraries and people doing research would be our major customers. It turned out after we were funded and everything, some of our major customers were the Army because they couldn't figure out what was in all the databases they had. Then the Soviet Union dissolved, and then the Russian government came. They couldn't figure out what was in their database. Eventually, the company, the, the internet came along, and we were we were displaced. I was no longer with the company then. But that's, you know, one way something that might have changed the world. But I also came up with an idea. I was flying back and forth from Boston to Philadelphia once a week because I was treasurer of the company. I was located in Boston. The company was mostly in Philadelphia. It was the start of, of uh, frequent flyer stuff. You had coupons you had to keep track of. You had every every uh, airline had a different card, different way of doing it. So I came up with this folder for keeping track of your frequent flyer stuff. Uh, changed the world though. Um, we went to a manufacturer in Worcester. He made them, made us some. Uh, Samples of leather. We went to a guy in Dayton, Ohio. They made us samples of vinyl. We went out and tried to sell them to airlines and to um, government agencies and stuff like that. So the idea can come, you know, you drive, you're flying, and you got a stack of stuff. You got a problem. So you're solving the problem. How do I organize this stuff? I still use my leather. Um, How did the company do? 
we hit six months now. Because the economy tanked. And the travel industry tanked. Um, so you're victim of the business. Thanks, so, um, but, you know, we didn't lose money. We made some money. We just didn't make a lot. And our goal was to sell, you know, millions. Um, we sold thousands. I mean, I had to work for a company. They were flying back and forth between Boston and Oak Ridge doing um, software development for the government. And one time they were there flying, and the guy next to them was a assistant to the head of a major airline. And they were just talking at the end of the conversation, at the end of the flight. The guy said, you should meet my boss. We've got some problems you could solve. And he gave him this card. And his boss was the chairman of uh, a major overseas airline. The airline flew them over to Europe. They said, you know, we've got a problem. We've got to schedule gate and ramp personnel. Our IT people can't do it. You guys are bright. We'll give you the money to do it. We'll buy you the computers. We'll give you a contract. So that's another way to get it. So there's, there's all different kinds of ways to get ideas. Um, and again, people come to me all the time with, I, they want to get rich, they want to save the world, they can't think of anything else to do, they want to start a business, but they don't have the idea. Hmm. They say, what shall I do? I go, I don't know. You know look around, figure out what you, what you want to do. Um, got to be a compelling reason for an idea to exist. There's something different about what you're going to do. If you're just going to do what everybody else does, who cares? I mean, McDonald's got started how? What's different about McDonald's? Anybody know? They simplified their menu. They got rid of everything except hamburgers, fries, and Cokes, and shakes. In the beginning. Very simple. Two locations. And how did they get the franchise? Well, somebody else had the idea of franchising, not the McDonald's owners. The guy who had the idea of franchising was the guy who sold them milkshake machines. They were buying a lot of milkshake machines and he wanted to know what was going on. I said, you know, we should franchise this all over. They said, we don't, we're not interested, so he bought the company. His idea wasn't, his idea was a franchise. I mean, you can have it. Again, people have to recognize that it's different. If nobody knows that it's different from something else, who cares? They'll just go on with what they want. Again, your idea, we're going to change everything. And people have to care. They have to be willing to spend. Again, a good business idea. It ought to be something that you like doing. Because you're going to spend a lot of time doing it. Why would you do something you think is boring? That's a really, really great idea. It'd be really boring. Find somebody that's going to, that really is excited about investing in them. 